Oh yeah, the sound of 3D printers. So nice, so nice. Actually, the one behind me, the ANET A8, is actually surprisingly quiet. And then there's the, uh, you know, the TAS-6. But of course, the sound is entirely dependent on what you are printing. And of course, how well you tune your printer. Welcome back to another Reality Check video review. We're going to be doing a, just a quick upgrade video. Uh, I got something in the mail today, something I actually ordered online from McEwen uh, 3D. And basically, it is an upgraded replacement for the MK8 extruder. It's supposed to be a bit stronger than the one that originally came with it and better. Uh, also... Uh, the one that I've got on there right now, it is a 3D printed plastic piece that I've got going for the flexible filament to work with it. I've heard that people that use this one actually have better luck using the flexible filament um, using this as well. So I'm going to go ahead and try to install it. Just in case you are wondering. That's right, it was about $20.50 to get it to me. The, the actual product itself is $14, and then of course shipping was $6.50. So I got it for just about uh, 20, oh, just over $20. Okay, okay, nice packaging. Looks like I got a little bit of the package already opened here. Okay, so they gave me an invoice for the product as well as what looks like some instructions here on exactly how best to fit this, uh, which is nice. That's awesome. So basically what it says here is it uh, says, Hi Caleb, I have included an extra fitting in black. This fitting is unique in that it is an M6 thread yet will allow a 4mm Bowden tube to pass through it. I may be changing this extruder to use only this part in place of the threaded tube. Okay. Um, lock nut and coupler nut, right? Okay. With this extra fitting, you can push the Bowden tube directly up to the gear drive. Oh, nice. Okay, so I like this. I like this a lot. It's a, it's a nice idea. So basically, we don't have to do as much uh, finicky work like we did before. This will really, really help us with using any kind of flexible filament that we want to do. He says he started a Facebook page for S4 users. If you search Creality CR10 S4 on Facebook, you can find our growing user group there. All right, thanks, Ryan. Certainly appreciate it. Um, I did buy this product myself, so I still have to give it a try to see how it works. But from what I've seen, uh, people say it's, it's definitely the best way to go. So this right here is that little black fitted Bowden tube he's, he's got on here. Nice. Ooh. Okay, so... Yeah, I'm gonna have to do some close-ups, but right now we have the original piece that it came with, and then, of course, we've got the piece that he's talking about um, with the black piece right here, so looks like I'm going to experiment with each of these guys. Ah, nice. Okay, so I think I have this actually figured out right now. Basically, if you use this piece, and if you can kind of look inside here where the main thread is, if you look inside, that can still get a little bit of, uh, there's a little bit of space in there. So if you're using flexible filament, it has the potential to bind up right in there. So if you're using the spot where you've got the, you know, the, the tube where you put it right in there, you know, it, it hopefully is going to stay. But by using this other piece that he's fitted me with, I can put this on there, and I can actually put the tube all the way through it, which will significantly help uh, flexible filament, I'm sure. So, uh, this is going to be a great little fix. I'm going to go ahead and try to install it right now, and we'll see if we can't get it going. Some people have asked me about the PLA that I use, and I kind of actually use a variety of different filaments. I use Maker Geeks filaments, I use Protopasta, I use filament from Lulzbot. I kind of buy filament all, all over the place. I even use eSun filament from Amazon. Lately, I've actually been buying a lot of the 3D Mars filament just because it's, it's cheaper and it seems to be you know really good quality stuff. Like I've got some red right here, you can tell it's the bottom, and I've got some white right here. Uh, just to show you guys, you know, not all filament comes the same. I also use Hatchbox filament, gotta say. Uh, but this filament right here, when you when you get it, it you know, the deals are pretty great. The first time I bought it, I got it for $17 a roll. And uh, that was certainly uh, a very good deal, especially when it comes to uh, Amazon prices. So right there you can see we've got the filament in there. We're going to go ahead and open it up. And the first best thing you notice is that the filament is actually, you know, completely, completely, you know, vacuum packed like you want it to be. It's got tape holding it up there on top, and of course it's got the silica packet right there in the middle, keeping it as dry as possible. So uh, this filament, uh, just moving forward, as long as it keeps a, a cheap price, I, I like to use it a lot for my prototyping type stuff, uh, and I'm going to continue to do so. 
Anyway, I've got some TPU right now on the Creality CR10, so I'm gonna get this uh, extruder put on there, like I said, so we can get that TPU started, fired up. process wasn't that bad uh, you know it took maybe 30 minutes to put it on and of course I was recording at the same time so really o overall it was pretty easy to do I can definitely tell it's made of very high quality uh, it, it's certainly going to have a, a, a great impact if you plan on doing any flexible filament even if you don't it's going to obviously hold your filament and feed it through better you can tell even the, the, the little the teeth they give you on the wheel for the for the extruder is even stronger and a little bit separated more farther apart so it grips it a little better uh, I can definitely tell that also because they have the, the ability for me to put that filament all the way through because of that extra add-on that he gave me, that just makes it perfect. Now I can put the filament all the way to where it needs to go without any problems at all. There is no potential spot for there to be any binding. And obviously if you allow for less spots for there to be binding, we're just going to be in a better spot. Um, and, and as you could tell from the footage, we, we've got basically the filament is going right up to the extruder on each side rather than just one side. So at no point do I feel like anything's going to happen that's not going to work. So right now what I've got is I've actually got a spiral vase mode going to be printing right now. It's going to take about three hours for it to print. And it uh, looks like it's actually just about started right now. 